All right, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is, wherever it is that you are. Welcome once more to another video podcast of Political News Time, brought to you by the PNT Live Network. I am your hostess, Alex Mayers. Tonight's going to be a little bit of a different podcast. It is going to revolve around politics, specifically the politics of perceived sex trafficking. Um, I'm specifically using that term perceived sex trafficking because sex trafficking, that's a very um, touchy subject. It's a very complicated issue. It's a crime that has still up in the year 2020 not been properly defined because there's so many politics surrounding what sex trafficking exactly is. So we're going to get into that tonight. And tonight I want to talk very seriously about um, a young entertainer, a young, very talented entertainer whose life could go quite a few paths and who at this particular juncture in time, he's at a very crucial stage to where I feel that all of us out there who are of the light, who are good people, who have good intention, we all need to um, keep an eye on him and support him, make sure that um, certain nefarious energies don't do their thing when it comes to him because he does have a lot of potential. He's a game changer when it comes to a lot of things that could potentially happen within the realm of IRL entertainment, um, when it comes to the issue of men being victimized by the adult entertainment industry, when it comes to the issue of men being possible sex trafficking targets by certain groups that see certain things within them that could easily be exploited. Um, Just so many things, gosh, so many things. So I guess tonight could be dubbed the Ski Mask Andy show, okay? But it's not only about Ski Mask Andy, it's about some other very important issues that I feel are applicable to a lot of young men out there. So first and foremost, I want all of you out there who um, care about these issues to make sure that you go over to YouTube, you type in Ski Mask Andy. He has, I believe, three channels. Make sure that you subscribe to all of them because he seems to go on different ones at different times and get to know what he's about. He's very entertaining. (laughs) One of the most entertaining actors I've seen in a very long time. I am so glad actually that he's gone through um, a bit of what he's going through right now because I think it saved his life. If he'd gone into the adult entertainment industry, that would have killed him. Would have killed that sparkle. And that is what I think um, some individuals had in mind when it came to him. So anyway, how am I going to start this podcast? Well, first off, let's touch base in regards to what's happening with Ski Mask Andy right now. Right now, he is in some legal trouble due to getting involved with a woman who likes to portray herself as being a retired adult actress, but that does not necessarily seem to be the truth. That's not exactly the truth when it comes to her. Um, She is still active within the world of adult entertainment. I'm not even going to say her name in this podcast, but this particular woman has a history of what appears to be severe mental illness, that I don't think that she's ever received the proper care for, which is very unfortunate and definitely not her fault. From my perspective, it is the fault of her parents. But um, she's been very enabled over the years when it comes to her bad behavior. Um, She has a history of getting into 
toxic situations and very toxic relationships. Right before Ski Mask Andy, she was in a relationship with a young man who appeared to have cared for her, but who um, she, for whatever reason, didn't want to be with. And that's her choice, not knocking the girl for that. But the relationship didn't end in a good way. And she jumped right from that toxic relationship into another with Ski Mask Andy. Now, Ski Mask Andy has his own set of issues. I am not going to say that he's an angel. As I've said in previous podcasts, I do think that he could benefit tremendously from seeing a therapist on a weekly basis. He probably doesn't have the money to do that right now, which is why those of us of the light, we do need to be supportive of him right now because in the future, he will have the money to get that therapy he needs to where he can learn how to control his emotions and his temper without external substances. He smokes too much marijuana, in my opinion. I hate to say it. I know that's some people's medicine. You know, it, it is what it is. We all go through different phases in life. But in life, you need to be able to feel. You need to be comfortable with feeling that all life throws at you, the highs and the lows. And you need to be able to roll with the good times and the bad times. Um, And you shouldn't need to constantly use a substance to numb yourself. Um, I am talking from experience. I was an alcoholic for many years. I guess technically I'll always be an alcoholic, but I haven't had a drink or a cigarette since September 26th of 2019. So it can be done getting yourself free of the chains that hold you down. As of current, um, like I was saying, you know, he just got out of that relationship with a woman in the adult entertainment industry who um, she has some psychological issues of her own. And from my perspective, at least, she said something to law enforcement in regards to this young man That's not exactly accurate. What's going on? No problem. No problem. I'm just gonna put my shirt on. I'm just talking to my phone right here. Come on here. You want me? This is my phone right here. Leave it there. Come on here. We'll get it. Come on. This is weed in the lighter. I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. Put it on. Okay. I'm not trying to get shot. You guys can grab me over here. Okay. Come on. Don't grab anything. What's up? No problem. I'm just gonna have to I'm gonna grab your stuff and I'm gonna rig it with Asha, right? You just need to talk really quick. I'm still live with the uh, suspect now. Uh, that's 100%. Can you copy? Are you on the. Yeah, just can. I'll get it. Push the. He wound up being thrown in jail. He's out of jail now. He um, is out on bond and he has an ankle monitor. He's staying out of trouble. Seems to be occupying himself in a very healthy way. I feel that he was unjustly persecuted for essentially being anti-porn. And it's just way too much fucking, it's just a waste of energy and fucking time to try and like make somebody like that into a girlfriend. (laughs) Straight up, because she, for one, she's still like a fucking adult performer. I don't know what the fuck she like tries to lie and say she's not, but she has a stupid ass fucking OnlyFans and uh, it has videos on there of her fucking her uh, boyfriends and random ass dudes from motherfucking the last four years. Like to me, that's still being a porn person, but I don't even give a fuck about that either. She was like, I keep it up. I get money from it, blah, 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 whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, get, I don't give a fuck about these weirdos sending me videos and pictures. <laughs> No, she's such a fucking dumbass. She always tries to twist the narrative. I don't give a fuck. Literally, all that does, I'm going to be honest, what that does, it makes her unattractive to me. Am I wrong? She's always like, for one, I'm going to be honest with you. She's always bragging about how, like, uh, 
you know, you got this in person, that in person, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the videos in in person are not the same thing, you know. So it's like the shit she's done on video and been videography or videotape doing is not even shit I would want to do with a chick sexually. Like, I don't want no bitch to put her fucking face in my ass cheeks. <laughs> I don't want no chick to shove a fucking any any anything near my ass. I don't want a bitch to finger my ass. I don't want none of that weird shit. Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't want a bitch to give my foot a blowjob. I don't want a bitch to motherfucking uh, fuck seven or eight of my friends with me. Like so, the, whatever she thinks she brings to the table, like as far as like her sexual whatever. Guys, you and I both know I'm not a motherfucking. I'm not running around here chasing pussy like it's crack, nigga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh, and that's what we're gonna talk about today because the young woman who he was in that relationship with, um, and I think a part of the reason I take so much interest in this situation is because I misjudged the, the situation. And I feel like if I hadn't taken up for her and um, written a note to him in regards to giving her another chance. I don't think he would be in as severe of a situation as he is today. I'm not saying I take the blame. We all have free will, but at the same time, she had me fooled too. So the, I, I want to talk more about this young woman he was in a relationship with, because I know that a lot of his followers have started watching my podcast and I want all of you to know what's in my head about her. All right. This young woman gravitated not only toward toxic relationships, but some of the worst characters within the adult entertainment industry. All right. For a while, she was seeing this one man known as Dave of an escort agency that has since been charged legally with sex trafficking known as the Luxury Companion. The Luxury Companion was an entity that was a bit of a mystery to a lot of adult entertainment bloggers such as myself for many, many, many years. We couldn't understand how it was able to operate and not get in trouble sooner. All right, because blatantly they were selling women into prostitution, right? That particular entity is now shut down, but there are many others just like it. But anyway, I'd known of, I'd known of that agency long before Ski Masks X ever even entered the adult entertainment industry. Keep in mind, I've been around a long time. I might look kind of young, but no. when I was in the adult entertainment industry, my stage name was Monica Foster. If you need to know my backstory, for those of you who follow Ski Mask Andy, look into Monica Foster and you'll see how long I've been around and what I've been up to. So anyway, I had documented quite a bit of information in regards to the Luxury Companion for quite some time. Somehow, actually I know how, just by being in the adult entertainment industry as a performer who wasn't getting booked as often as she would like, this particular young woman who Ski Mask Andy was involved with got involved with the Luxury Companion because she innately has this need for validation and power, which is something that Dave, one of the top operators of that entity, specifically looked for in the women that he got closer to, the women that he dated, lived with, slept with, attempted to groom even into being recruiters for his operation. He took an interest in this young woman and um, he probably disclosed quite a bit of his um, techniques to her, his methodology when it came to trafficking, recruiting people, um, how to evade the law, a, a lot of things. He, he was grooming her because she is smart. I'm not going to say she's not. She's, she's very smart, too smart for her own good, actually, um, considering the mental instability. But because she has a certain 
pattern within herself, that relationship with Dave did not last. However, here is the thing. When you are a adult entertainer or a sex worker and you get involved with a pimp of that magnitude, because the luxury companion was not some small time operation, okay? We are talking about an international operation, big money, booking its product, women, with major power players in business, politics, all across the board, entertainment, everything. So being that the young woman who Ski Mask was involved with was as close to Dave of TLC, that's the acronym for the Luxury Companion, being that she was as close to him as she was, there was no way in hell that he was gonna just let her fly free. Doesn't work that way. Generally, the only way that a relationship comes to a close when it comes to a um, pimp and a hoe is when one of them dies. That's the unfortunate truth. Even when one of them gets arrested, it's still not over. Now, as many of you know, I followed the young woman who um, Ski Mask Andy dated for quite a few years due to someone in her family, her mother, being very worried about her and myself having a soft heart and um, caring and thinking, okay, hey, if I was a mom, I'd want someone to do the same for me. Did it bite me in the butt? Absolutely. Though I don't have proof of this, I have a few theories when it comes to what's happened with this particular young woman. I think that she got a few good passes to where she could have moved on with her life, but she just isn't smart enough in that capacity when it comes to common sense. When that particular sex trafficking entity, the luxury companion, got busted, that was her opportunity to completely cut ties with the adult entertainment industry, say what she needed to say publicly about that entity, go into a traditional mainstream life, not attached to the adult entertainment industry in any way whatsoever. But did she do that? No. Why? Because she thinks she's smarter than she is and she thought she could get over on a few people and a few things. I think that she possibly has tried to apply what she learned from the luxury companion to create a startup similar to what TLC was and in some ways still is. I did notice that as Andy and his ex got closer, there seemed to be some blow-ups that he had when it came to her receiving a lot of phone calls. I think that a lot of those phone calls may have been related to the activity linked to what I'm discussing tonight, okay? The kind of stuff that TLC was involved with. I do know that upon the operator of TLC's release, he got in contact with this young woman. That scares me because that tells me that to a degree, she's still under his control or at least his influence. When it came to some of the insults that she threw my way that I addressed on a previous podcast that you can find over on the Porn News Today YouTube channel. The things that she said were things that I know he said about me. So that's a bit of what we're looking at here. Now, when it comes to Andy, let's talk about him a little bit, okay? I do wish 
very much that Andy's ex had been able to completely separate from the adult entertainment industry and clean her ass up because though I could be wrong because sometimes as you all have seen I have been wrong about people um Andy's a diamond in the rough she could see a bit of that but she's greedy so greedy and it's fine to be greedy sometimes but you gotta be willing to work and go the proper channels to be what you want to be there are no shortcuts can't steal from people or borrow from people or emulate people to get where you want to be in life you got to be an original you got to do it yourself you got to take the long path anyways Andy is talented very talented he also has put in the work to develop a fan base which is growing exponentially by the day. He is an IRL, in real life, genre YouTube streamer. He's going to be a lot more. He doesn't know it yet. All he's gotta do is stay on the right path, stay out of trouble. Do not return to toxic people, Andy. Cut your losses. Might hurt your heart. You might cry and scream sometimes, but trust me, you have a good future ahead of you. Don't go back to hell. Your ex, she's in hell and she doesn't seem to want to leave. You have to want to leave. And there's nothing you can do, Andy, to convince her otherwise. You don't have that power. No one does. To leave hell, the only way you can leave is through the gate within your own heart. So anyway, Andy is exactly what the adult entertainment industry looks for. Someone with a lot of talent who does not understand how talented they are. Someone who already has a catalog of content that is worth quite a bit of money, yet they don't understand the worth of it. Someone who's hit a few hard times. Someone with a bit of low self-esteem due to maybe having gone into a bit of trouble. Someone who comes from not so wealthy of a background. Someone who has a light inside. Someone who is strong. The adult entertainment industry doesn't want crap. As a whole, the adult entertainment industry is too narcissistic for that. <laughs> the adult entertainment industry in itself is like a freaking narcissistic, sociopathic, bipolar boyfriend. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's what it is. But um, yeah, I actually think that there are parties that Andy's ex is still attached to who saw her get with Andy and who were like, wow, we could sure make a lot of money off that guy. So now we're going to get into why I believe that he was all, almost a sex trafficking victim. Kind of, at least if the rumors are true about him being recorded in a um, compromising situation without his consent, he actually is a sex trafficking victim. But I don't know all the details about that. I've just heard the rumors. That's his story to tell. That's his situation to press charges against his ex in regards to if he decides to do so. Um, but anyway, Andy is an actor. He doesn't even know how good of an actor he is. And that is something that the adult entertainment industry doesn't have a lot of. They have a lot of people who might look okay, a lot of people who might be able to perform sexually, but when it comes to actually being able to act, rare. But Andy can do that. Someone who appeals to women. I'm talking about male, potential male performers. 
Andy does that without having to take his clothes off already. He has a big female fan base, and like I said, it is exponentially growing. He is perfect for mainstream entertainment, in my opinion. Appeals to a broad spectrum of women, too. Actually, you know who he looks like a little bit? Chris Pine. It took me a while to place him, but he looks a lot like that actor, Chris Pine. He, Chris Pine was the male lead in Wonder Woman. He played Captain Kirk in the Star Trek reboot. Same kind of look. You know, some people might be like, oh, well, Andy has a little bit of a receding hairline. <laughs> Nothing a little bit of Rogaine can't fix. <laughs> And even if he decided not to go that route, look at the success that Bruce Willis attained. You, you, you don't have to have hair. He has enough talent to get past that. But yeah, he has that kind of look. And in the adult entertainment industry, that is a rare look. Now we're gonna talk about something. Some of you might be like, oh, what you're about to say, Alexandra, is kind of racist, it's going into race. So what? I don't shy from racism or issues pertaining to race, because when it comes to stereotypes, there's always truth to certain things. When it comes to, uh, you, you know, things that are touchy subjects, they're touchy subjects for a reason. Now, here's the reality when it comes to the adult entertainment industry, okay? The adult entertainment industry primarily does cater, at least within America, to middle-class white Americans. That's why the majority of the talent at least appears to be white American. Now, some talents are passing. Who can I think of? Xander Corvus, for example. He appears to be white. He is listed as a Caucasian male talent. In actuality, he is what in the old days you would call a um, octoroon. He has a tiny bit of black in him. He actually tries to identify as black nowadays because he thinks it makes him cool, even though in actuality, he's doing the black community a huge disservice because he's talking about things that he just doesn't know about. He's never lived his life as a black man because he does not appear to be a black man. To live your life as a black man, you have to appear to be a black person. But you have a lot of Latinos or Latinas who pass as Caucasian in the adult entertainment industry. You have a lot of individuals who I suppose you could label as being white Americans because a lot of people of Jewish descent do consider themselves to be white Americans. But you don't have very many white Americans in the adult entertainment industry who are of Nordic descent or Germanic descent. That appears to be what Ski Mask Andy is, hence why he has that look about him. That is kind of like a little Chris Pine meets um, that dude who played Thor, I uh, can't think of his name, meets Brad Pitt. All right, handsome dude. And that's the kind of guy that the adult entertainment industry is looking for because he's very marketable, very castable. Now, here's what kind of scared me a little bit when it came to his ex, when it came to some things that she was talking about recently. So William McGovern, AKA Billy Boston, sent a letter to my parents that I was a prostitute. They already knew. Um, William McGovern now lives with Ian William Laird Kaufman, who's known for having sex with animals and got his daughter taken away. So William and Ian, two guys that I dated, moved in together as well both of them like things in their butt i literally got pictures of these dudes getting it in the ass now here's what a lot of people don't realize about the male talents in the adult entertainment industry and why you as a man all of you young american men out there who might fit ski mask andy's um profile his appearance you don't want to go in that world why because just because you're cast at first in straight material, meaning heterosexual content, that's most likely not gonna be where you end up making your money. 
slowly but surely they are going to try to segue you or groom you into other types of adult content content that some people are perfectly okay with content that you know if you're very sexually fluid and open you're okay with but content that someone like ski mask andy from my perspective absolutely would not be comfortable with one thing we won't do is uh, gay porn to live in hollywood that's what we wouldn't do bro that's like one thing if, if that's what it takes to stay we gotta leave guys um the reason i think that his ex had the objective of slowly pushing him into um the adult entertainment industry was because she was mentioning certain types of adult content that she was featured in to him that had to do with um sexual activity that ski mask andy likely did not find appealing content that kind of opens the gateway to realms of bisexuality the lgbtq community things like that and again you know if that floats your boat hey but just from everything that i've taken the time to learn about when it comes to ski mask andy that was not for him all right a penitentiary guy like me we don't play the we don't play the both sides of the fence i don't like bisexual people around me <laughs> You gotta be, I don't, I don't mind gay people, but you just can't be, yeah, if you're a gay person, I probably won't hang out with you, honestly, just because the way I live my life. You'll probably be scared to death of the shit I get into. But, uh, we, uh, dig gay people more than, like, undercover, like, whatever. I appreciate somebody who's real with himself more than someone that's hiding. Again, just the mere fact that there are those rumors circulating in regards to her recording him without his exact consent, that tells me that she was looking to somehow make money off of him. Um, there are not that many male talents that are consistent performers. Maybe he is skilled in that department and she discovered that about him. And she may have had the objective of loaning him out, AKA pimping him, to other independent content producers such as herself who needed a male talent. That is a common practice in the world of adult entertainment. She actually went through that process, but as the person who was being loaned out or pimped out, and she does seem to be someone who is a victim turned predator. So just from a lot of things that she was saying when it came to him, it seemed like that was her objective. I think that it's possible that that ex of hers that I mentioned, who was the primary operator of the Luxury Companion, may have been encouraging her. The fact that he has a criminal background made him more susceptible to being a target of sex traffickers because it, it's when someone has a criminal history it's easy for a pretty young woman to claim to the police that she was victimized by that person because who is a who is the law enforcement most likely going to believe the guy with the criminal history or the pretty young woman especially if she appears to be white A lot of male talents actually in the adult entertainment industry have criminal backgrounds. I think if you were to look at the details of how a lot of men in the adult entertainment industry who are adult actors came into the industry, you would actually find a lot of situations not too dissimilar to what Andy has just escaped. Pimps nowadays, especially with the rise in the ease of the use of the internet they have become very um diabolical when it comes to how they traffic people into their world he seems to have to be someone who understands that the adult entertainment industry is not the way to go 
He seems to actually embody a lot of qualities that would actually make him a perfect anti-porn activist. I almost wonder if he's meant to be one. Every time I think he's not, there's another kind of sign that tells me mm, he might be. He's descendant of a, a pastor, his grandfather. That's why he has that gift to gab. He said he does have a traditional college degree as well. Public speaking. For now, being that he needs to uh, probably earn some money, he should open a pay per minute hotline for men to call to get advice on women because he is good with the ladies. He should establish himself in that market in time. He should probably look into becoming a life coach of some sort if he can get his own health under control and get his substance use when it comes to that marijuana under control. Um, I think that he would be a very good speaker to men's groups. Very good, but he also should take some acting classes, traditional acting classes and probably go out for some roles. I think he would easily land some character roles and, you know, get, us, get, get your physique in order. You have a good build, fine tune that. You have a good future, Ski Mask Andy. But yeah, I, I think that some people who were looking for male talents because also just as he appeals to the ladies, he would appeal to the LGBT community of men as well. And that would be big dollars on the private market. Sorry to get all blunt there, but it's the reality. And traffickers would know that. So being that they would have an end to him through his ex. Yeah, I am not happy when it comes to what his ex did to him. Because he's stuck in the goddamn city of sin where there's nothing but trouble on every corner, crime on every corner, and he cannot legally leave. You know, that's a sure sign of an abuser. That's why I kick myself when I think to myself, that, or just I kick myself for having thought for so long that his ex was a victim because consistently with man after man, it's even on freaking videotape. Whenever a dude tries to get out of her life, she orchestrates a situation to where he has a difficult time leaving her ass. And I think she learned it from one of her parents. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I'm pissed at her damn mom for bringing me into the equation of her daughter's life. Mom should have done a better job. A lot of parents should have done a better job. I do, in part, blame parents when children, their children, end up in situations such as the adult entertainment industry because why does anyone end up in that world? Seeking false validation. That was in part my story. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this podcast now, but if you see this, again, Ski Mask Andy, do not return to that toxic situation that you have just escaped. Do not go into the adult entertainment industry. You might get to a point where you think to yourself, man, that is some money. Let me go in there and get it. Never works out in the long run. I have been an adult entertainment industry blogger for over 10 years. I've never seen it work out for anybody. <laughs>